Hey guys, Shanna Kramer here. Welcome to Creatively Uncorked. This is our live Monday night paint along. And tonight we're going to do Blowing in the Wind. This is an oldie but goodie, uh, one from our library from back in the Moorhead days. If you ever painted with us back when we had our Moorhead studio, we were there from 2015 to 2016 and a half, roughly in there. Um, so yeah, that, that was a pretty fun one. Uh, so we haven't really taught this one very often since, and the reason is because it needs a special brush. This blowing in the wind takes a fan brush. Uh, so if you signed up for this and if you picked up your art kit from Creatively Uncorked, even if you ordered new brushes, you would have also gotten a fan brush, which probably used, but probably in pretty good condition because we never used them other than this one painting. So you would have gotten a bonus brush. So welcome to Creatively Uncorked. Uh, Creatively Uncorked, for those of you that aren't familiar with us, started back in January 2014. And we have our West Fargo studio, which is for age six and up. And then we have beer and wine for sale for anybody that's age 21 and up. Of course, we'll have that back, you know, whenever they tell us we can be doing studio events again. In the meantime, we're happy to do online live events. And then also the art kits, of course. Hi, Patsy, good to see you. Missed you on Monday. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, as we go through tonight, we just have two rules. No, rule number one, have fun. Rule number two, no negativity. If you have trouble with either of these rules, grab yourself a cocktail or just take a deep breath, chill out, come back, and we'll paint again. So I know, because I've been told several times that I'm painting a little too fast. So if I'm painting too fast for you, get on the comments, tell me to slow down. Um, actually, you know what? Get on the comments anyway, say hi. Meet your new friends. We don't get to do social painting in the studio. We get to do social painting through Facebook. So be social, say hi to everybody. So let me see what we have here. All right, so we have our, if you got your art kit from, from us from Creatively Uncorked. You probably got a brush that looks like this. This is what we're calling the flat brush. So that's, you probably have that in your instructions. It'll say flat. That's what this is. And then we have the fan brush. That's this one. If you have brushes similar to this at home, if you're using your own materials, that's great. If you don't have a fan brush, uh, find something that you can kind of flatten out because that's the key here is having the flat bristles. So if you can find something similar, that would work out fine. We don't need that many paints today. We have black, red, white. Black and white are pretty crucial. Uh, any other color that you want, maybe you don't want a pinkish tree, maybe you want some other color, have another color. That's perfectly fine. So as I work today, and hi guys, I see we're getting new people, so just feel free to jump in and say hi. Okay, I am going to take my paint out and put it out on the plate, just because I know I'm going to be mixing a lot. Not yet with the red, we're working with just the black and white so far. And I'm curious, how many of you are new, like have never painted with Creatively Uncorked before or never painted with us in our studio before? Leave me a comment. bit more white paint there. Hi Holly, how are you? And some of these names are familiar. I know that some of you guys have come in this week and picked up art kits. And if you're if you purchased an art kit from Creatively Uncorked, thank you sincerely for supporting us in this uh, strange time. If you did not pick up an art kit and you're painting with your own materials, thank you for joining us. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that we still get to paint together, even though we don't get to paint in the studio. So this will be fun. So I have my black, I have my white, I have my couple of different brushes, and uh, we'll have to do the Creative Land Cork Brush Pledge. So now, even if you guys are using your own brushes, which of course you all are at this point, here's how you take care of your brush. <laughs> you hold up your brushes, repeat after me. I will not let paint dry on my brushes. I will put my brushes in water when I'm done using them. And I will make the cutest blowing in the wind tree ever. 
Okay, so <laughs> you've sworn to it, stick to it. And Cassie, you are welcome. Yes, we do shipping and we'll ship anywhere. We've been shipping to a lot of local places, West Fargo, uh, Fargo, Grand Forks, um, all over Minnesota, North Dakota, even Texas and Arizona. So yes. Hi, Heather. <laughs> no sound yet. Um, click a different button. You guys can all hear me. Yeah, if you're not getting sound, I'm not sure. Um, I think everybody else can hear. So if you can't hear, um, maybe click on the video. So if you see the video pop up in a window, click on it and that should get it. Sorry, I know this isn't helping you because I'm just talking on the video. So here, let me see if I can find the live and reply. Sorry yet. Yep, I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully that'll get you some sound. All right. And how are you guys doing? I'm so excited to paint with you. This is my favorite part of the week. I don't get to see very many people all week long, so this is this is it for social time. I'm not even going to the grocery store anymore. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I'm not a kitchen person anyway, but <laughs> I, I know I'm not the only one that's doing some creative kitchening these days. Um, curious, what's the oldest thing you guys have found in your cupboard? Asking for a friend. <laughs> I found something today from, hi Kim, how are you? Hi Josie. And I'm not sure if it's safe to eat or not, but I found some rice. It didn't have an expiration date at all. It had a, a copyright date of 2005, but I know that's not the same thing. So I don't know. I'm going to give it a try, I think, and see if it kills me. <laughs> so on to our 2013. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's, <laughs> did you eat it? <laughs> no, I'm sure not. So I have this uh, lovely, lovely painting in the lovely background. So we have, my canvas today is going to be 11 by 14. I think if you picked up your kits from us, you probably have also an 11 by 14 canvas. So any other canvas, if you're working with your own, whatever size you want to work with is fine. Not a big deal. Uh, we just have some similar processes that were... <laughs> 2008? All, well, seasonings, they kind of hang out in the cupboard and just live there and you forget about them, right? I mean, you never know. <laughs> I guess I probably wouldn't try one from 2008, but... <laughs> So when you get through this painting, your process will be pretty similar. We just have that little bit at the top of our sky background. Um, and then if you're looking at the written instructions, just go ahead and ignore those because we're going to do our own thing. And then I'll probably update the written instructions to match what we do here. Uh, so once we get done with that sky background, we'll probably do a little bit of splatter painting. If you feel safe doing splatter painting in your house, I know it's going to be a little bit different for all of us. Um, but we might try that. And then we have these background mountains that we'll be adding, those little gray mountains. And then when we start working on our foreground, we'll start working on our gray down here and work our way up to the mountains. And then we'll have those dark foreground mountains. Well, I guess they're all background mountains, but the black mountains in the background, how's that? <laughs> okay, so I'll set this reference photo aside. And if we're ready to get started, we'll go ahead and, like I said, I'm just dumping out my black paint, my white paint, just right onto a plate. And if you have a plate handy, that's great. We just finally came up with a brilliant idea of actually putting plates in the art kits. I don't know why we didn't do it before. Sorry about that. But if you order a new art, art kit, they're in there now. Um, so I'll start out with a little bit of black and I'll take a little, little more white, more white than black. I'm going for kind of a medium light gray. And if you have a reference photo handy, and you probably have this handy, so you're just trying to match that gray up there at the top. And this looks pretty close to me. Our sky is only going to take up about a fourth of the top of the canvas. So if you divide it into quarters, 
that's about how big it's going to be. And if you have a little half inch brush like this one, it might seem like it's way too small to cover the background, but it's not, it'll be fine. So the only thing I'm going to be worried about with my background is that my, when it gets closer to the horizon, it'll just be a little bit lighter. And I better move my other brush because I'm a paint flinger and I don't want to get that one full of paint quite yet. <laughs> Pro tips on how to not be a paint flinger, by the way. <laughs> this is the do as I say, not as I do section of this painting. Um, so to not be a paint flinger, all you have to do is start off the edge of your canvas and paint on to the canvas. It's really pretty simple. Where you get the paint flinging happening is if you paint off the edge of the canvas, like this, and you kind of flick the paint. Ooh, Kim, that's good to know. Spices are good for three to four years and dried leafy herbs for one to three years. Okay, that is really good to know. I know that I've found some herbs in the cupboard before that I don't really know how old, but you can definitely smell the difference. And there are some that really don't have a very good smell after a while. And I don't know if that, that's more reliable than looking at expiration dates. Probably not, I don't know. And what about stuff that doesn't have an expiration date? How does that happen? Was it something like, did they make a law that said, okay, from this date forward, everything has to be have an expiration date and anything before then doesn't? Because that might indicate how old that rice is, for example. I mean, all it has is a copyright date. Copyright 2005? That really tells me nothing. <laughs> so as we're working our way down, all I'm doing, I have my sky covered. I'm taking some big glob of white here and just blending that into the bottom of the sky and then working my way up. And that'll get my white to blend up toward the top. And really all that's doing is just making sure that my sky toward the ground is lighter than the sky at the top. That's it, that's all. And don't worry about being making this even or perfect. It's okay if it's streaky. It can have a nice painterly effect. It's a painting after all. I'll just set that in my water and wait for everybody to catch up. We're going to try a little bit of paint splattering. It'll be just a little bit different technique than, uh, than we've done the past couple of paintings because we have different brushes this time. So we'll do our paint splatters with our flat brush instead of the big bristle brush. And wow, how's this for living dangerously? So here's my drinking water. <laughs> Here's my paint water. <laughs> I have them sitting on opposite sides of the table, but I don't know if that'll be, hopefully that'll be enough. <laughs> the paint that we are working with, if you picked up your paint from us is, well, it's acrylic paint and the paint that we use at Creatively Uncorked is non-toxic. So if you do drink your paint water, it probably won't kill you. Um, if you're using your own paints, all I can say is check the label. And I've heard people say that acrylic paint is non-toxic. That is not true. It is not non-toxic because it's acrylic. It's the colors that determine whether or not it's toxic. So any brand can be toxic, except probably Crayola, you know, I mean, they're, they're meant for kids. So, um, and read the label. The prettier the paint, probably the more toxic it is, just like in real life. You see a really pretty uh, frog or snake, spider, probably toxic. So paints work the same way. All right, so we have our nice sky. Let's get our, so I'm just taking my brush, I'm just dunking it in water. I have a lot of water on my brush now, picking up a little white, mixing it in, and this is for my splatter. I want this white to be really, really runny, but not completely drippy. So yeah, it's pretty runny. And when I look up at my sky up here, so here's what I'm doing. I'm just taking my hand, I'm taking my brush loaded with paint and just tapping gently. And 
this will get paint everywhere. So if you're in an area that you don't want to get paint everywhere, don't do this. Okay, another trick, and let me just try and see if this works. This is what we do with our blue handled brush, the bristle brush. But if I can use this kind of like a toothbrush, and if you have a toothbrush, by the way, that's going to be better. Yeah, I'm not going to say that this is a very good method because you kind of get some shooting stars here and there, some strange constellations. But whatever you want to do, it's your painting. I'm not your mom, probably. And uh, the method that's the most safe would be using the back of your handle. So just dip that in your paint. It's You still have to use the same liquidy paint and then just add some dots. Nice and easy. So have fun with that. Go ahead and splatter. Um, we'll be adding the rest of our background here in just a little bit, give you a chance to play. And I know there are probably some people that are just watching this for now that'll come back later and paint it later. And I think every video so far, we've had people come back and do the painting the next day. That is perfect. I love it. Either way, I would love to see what you guys paint. Please post it in the Facebook group. One thing we'll do after you've got your stars all splattered on, just wiping off some of the extra water on my towel. And if you have a paper towel handy, that's great. I've been kind of cheating lately and just using a whole entire towel just right underneath my canvas. I find that it works really well for me. So you do what you wanna do with your towel. One thing that we can add right now, I'll go back to my original here, is the moon. So I'll just take a little bit of paint on my flat brush and then find a spot in the sky where I think a moon should go. Press down that brush. Sorry, I know you can't really see this very well, but all I'm doing is just pressing down the brush and then twisting. If it doesn't work now, do it later after your background is dry. Looking pretty good. Don't want to rush you too much. Just thinking we'll probably move on to those mountains next. And those are going to be just slightly darker than the background. So whatever gray you had on your sky, we'll just add a little bit more black to it. Just slightly darker, not a lot darker, just barely darker. And one good way to get a just slightly darker color is to compare. So right now these colors look pretty much the same and acrylic paint always dries darker. So putting this on will probably allow, um, end up having a slightly darker mountain, which would probably be a good look. Just to be, a sh be sure, I'm just gonna add a touch more black paint. Okay. And this is way loaded up with Paint. So I'll just take a little bit of that paint off. I'm just kind of wiping that paint on the plate and flattening the brush at the same time. Now I'll come back over here and these are just kind of like wiggly little crooked mountains. Just kind of wiggly little soft mountains. I'm just kind of making some wiggly little marks. And then just sort of filling it in. These mountains, they shouldn't have a whole lot of character, a whole lot of definition. They're just way in the background, way off in the distance. So I'll just put them there and let that go. It's basically the reason they're there is to kind of give some depth to the mountains that we're putting over the top of them. Okay. So when you're, when you're done with your mountains, ready to move on, let me know. I like doing these lives. Uh, the downside is I can't walk around the room and see how everybody's doing, see how fast you're painting, if I'm way ahead of you or if I'm not. So just let me know. Just put it in the comments. Look forward to hearing from you. So 
So we just had that little bit of splatter in the sky, the moon, the mountains, and then we're ready for our background. Just to show you the background one more time. It's just a little bit grayer on the bottom and then it kind of fades to black as you go up toward the horizon line. And then we just have those couple of little mountains off on the left side. So just taking what gray I have here on my brush and just going down to the bottom of that canvas. Just a little, kind of a real, it's a dark gray. I'd call it about an 80% gray. So if you ever mix your colors on a computer, about 80% black, that's about what that color would be. And that's just toward the very bottom just and that's just to get our tree to show up our tree trunk because our tree trunk will be black and then as we work our way up just take more and more black each time and it'll just naturally go darker and darker until you get up to the horizon line If you are painting your edges, you can just go ahead and kind of wrap the color right around the edge. I think it's a little more important to cover the front of the canvas first, just because you want to blend all these colors while the paint is still wet. So I usually like to just cover the front of the canvas first and then skip the sides. <laughs> I really very rarely ever paint the sides, but if you want to, you certainly can. Just make sure the front of your canvas looks good first and is done and then move on to the sides. How many of you are in Moorhead right now? fellow Moorheadians out there. <laughs> Not to scare you or anything, but check your basements. <laughs> there's some there's some flooding going on. Maybe not for you. Uh, we had a sump pump go out today, so we have a little bit of water in our basement, which is a little bit uh, scary because, well, I don't know, scary is the right word, but annoying is annoying a good word. That's a fantastic word. Well, my studio, I'm like, I'm in my basement right now. That's where everything is set up. So I don't want water down here. Luckily, it's not like a huge amount of water. It's just enough to um, get the carpets wet and boxes wet and stuff that's sitting on the floor wet. So yeah, if you have a sump pump, be sure to make sure it's working. So when you are working in your mountains and I'm about up to the top, of my horizon line right now. So you can see, I'll just like zoom in on this here real quick. You can kind of see a little bit how it just has some lighter areas right in here, just on the edge of the mountain. And that's something that's happening naturally if your gray mountains are still wet. So just go ahead and take uh, that black there. See, and I'm just kind of going over my gray mountains. See that? And because that gray paint is still wet, it just sort of naturally makes that blend. And if you're not getting that blend, don't worry about it. Don't put any effort into trying to make that blend. If you don't get that blend, so what? It's just a background. The main focus of this painting is going to be that tree. So we don't really need to worry about these mountains. If you get that blend, get that blend. If you don't get that blend, don't worry about it. Some things in life are important, right? A blend on that mountain, maybe not one of them. We're doing this for fun. We're doing this for enjoyment, for relaxation, for our chance to 
take some time for ourselves and do something that we can just enjoy doing. Okay, background is looking pretty good. So when you get your background to this point, and I don't know if I'm going to change that moon. I kind of like that moon the way it is. So it's kind of like, mm, almost like a, well, I can't think of the word, but anyway, <laughs> it's just kind of behaving nicely in the background. It just kind of has that, you know, sort of sci-fi feel almost. So I'm going to leave the moon alone. I'm not going to make that white again. If you want to change your moon, by all means, go ahead and change your moon later. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to leave mine. So I'm going to call the background here done and let it dry. That is looking pretty good. So question for you all. So I haven't been grocery shopping now in a few weeks and I'm having to get creative in the kitchen. And what have you guys found for really good creative recipes for things that you just might have in the back of your cupboard? Possibly since 2005? <laughs> I really wanna know. <laughs> Please do leave me comments. <laughs> I have to try to figure out how to make meals and it's and it's uh we're empty nesters now it's just me and my husband so i don't have to make any super huge meals like for the whole family or anything um but just something and we've been making like food that just lasts for a week you just eat leftovers for a week and that's perfect but really anything that can make use of the stuff in the cupboard i'm all about it i've been trying to look up recipes but you know I'm just not a kitchen person. Um, yeah, spaghetti, spaghetti sounds great. Chicken and rice. I actually have chicken and rice on the stove right now. Thank you, Kim. That's my rice from 2005. <laughs> maybe, maybe or maybe not from 2005. It's just a copyright. There's no expiration date. I might still be safe. Hmm, I do have a little bit of rice. Not very much though. I was not one of those hoarders at Costco that just got like all the 25 pound bags of rice they could get. I did not do that. I just got a few regular like one pound bags at the grocery store a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Chicken and rice does sound good. And I'm hungry. <laughs> so some questions that I had come up this week that I just wanted to answer just for everyone and I'm gonna try to do this this time without dunking my iPad into the wet paint because that didn't go well last time so there I'll try to be more careful um, so the the events and the events are like what we're doing tonight the events are the live paint alongs these you can find them on the calendar you can get your art kit on the calendar um, but these are the events so these events if you want your package to be shipped. You can't get shipping if you purchase on an event. We just can't add shipping to this. Uh, it's just the way the website is. So if you need to have this shipped, is there Cassie? There's an app where you can put in your ingredients. It'll tell you what to make. You know, there's like a bartender's friend app that did that. We used to use at the studio when we had the full bar. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to look that up. I will do that. Thank you, Cassie. So these events you can't get shipping on. So what, ha but on the art kits to go, uh, you can get shipping on. And the art kits to go, that's this section of the website where you can just choose from all these things and, um, and then if you want brushes, whatever, and then you can have it shipped from here. So if there's an event on the calendar, then, and you wanna have it shipped, I try to keep it similar uh, so that these Paintings will also be in the art kits to go section. Uh, so if you can't find, if you need these events shipped, just find it in the art to go section and then that we can ship it to you. Um, if you don't see it in the art kits to go, send us a message and we'll get it added because I want you to be able to have the kits for the live paint alongs. It just works a lot better. Some, I mean, some of these, like today's painting, we didn't have any pre-sketching, so that's something that would be easy for people at home doing their using their own supplies because there's no pre-sketching. And it's black, white, and one color, so that's also something that most people probably have. If they have any kind of paint, they're probably going to have 
black and white and hopefully at least one color. The only thing unusual about this one really is going to be the fan brush. And if you don't have a fan brush, you can probably make do with something else. Some of these though, do you have pre-sketching? Uh, so we've got like the boho bowl, that'll be pre-sketch. The feather is too, but you if you if you feel comfortable freehand drawing, you can do the feather freehand. Then we've got Cheshire and we've got the Heart of Paris. So all these are going to be pre-sketched for you on your canvas when you get your kits. Um, and Kissing in the Rain. You can pre-sketch or you can freehand draw that if you want to. Definitely easier to have it sketched on your canvas. So so just letting you know that if you need it shipped, just find it in the art kits to go section and we'll ship it out to you. And yes, we can ship anywhere. And yes, it's the same price. And we can fit up to three art kits in a box. So if you want to save money on shipping and just get more kits at once, that's a great way to do it. You can just get three. So that was one thing that came up this week. Um, we did add a few new things to the art kits to go. Let's see, we added, because it's boho week next week, right? We have the boho bowl and the boho feather. So we also have boho wall hanging. And these wall hangings we have, in the kits are going to have all kinds of stuff. So there'll be, they're all going to be a little bit different, um, but there's going to be some beads, definitely a, a bunch of different kinds of yarn, ribbon, things that you can tie. And then there'll be instructions for like how to tie, how to do some twists, how, some, how to do some, a few different things to make your boho wall hanging look pretty cool. And we have a couple of different color schemes, so that's something that you can check out. To get that one, let's see, I think we have, because we have the As Seen on Facebook for the art kit. So if you check out our main Facebook page, we have the As Seen on Facebook, so if you're finding something um, there that we don't have in our regular art kits to go, you can just make a note what you want and then we can make sure we have it together for you. Let's see, is it possible to have the types of brushes listed? Cassie's asking. I don't want to have take extra brushes if I don't have them, but I don't want to be without if I don't. Um, I will try to do a better job of that, Cassie, because I'm normally not listing the colors or anything extra until just a few hours before the painting. But yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I can I can start listing the brushes earlier. And most of the time, and <laughs> I hate to say it, but most of the time, if you just say used that you want used brushes, we'll send you the exact right brushes that you need for the painting because we already have those brushes in the studio and we already use them all the time. So if you choose used brushes, you're going to get the right brushes 99% of the time. If you choose new brushes, well, then we have, uh, we have our stack of new brushes that have never been used before that we're sending out but they might not be exactly the right brushes for the painting. They'll be as close as we can get them. Um, and then starting also next week, we'll be able to send out entire packs of brushes instead of just a couple plus a used one. And also, if there's a brush that you need to have, like with these kits, even if you said you needed wanted new brushes, we would have also sent you the used brush just because it's this is the kind of brush that's pretty important. But Yes, Cassie, to answer your question, I will try to do better in the future of listing the types of brushes needed a little bit further in advance. And and thanks for commenting <laughs> and keeping me entertained, guys. <laughs> like I said, this is about all I get for social time in a week. I go two places. I go to the studio and I go home. And that's about it so so i'm happy to talk to you and answer all of your questions and also if you you've probably seen this before but in case you haven't we've had people asking for virtual art kits and this is about as close as we can get to what i've figured at this point is a pretty reasonable solution uh, we have a patreon account and so you can become a patron uh, for very little money uh, so just for an example the $14 Creatively Acrylic, that's going to get you um, Creatively Uncorks basic acrylic paintings. And we'll have downloads if they have any traceables or any templates or anything that need to go with them. We'll 
uh, as often as possible. Have those available in download as a download so you can get those with the painting. We'll have your supply list. Uh, we'll have links to the supplies as often as possible. Um, so we'll have everything there and usually most of them are going to have written instructions. Sometimes, if you've been painting with us for a little while, <laughs> you'll know that written instructions are not as easy as doing a video. It's just so much easier to follow along with a video. So, and that's one thing they'll definitely all have as a video. Um, I think that's probably the one most people would be interested in. Otherwise, there's the Creatively Crafts, which is the non-acrylic painting, sometimes a little bit of acrylic, but also other stuff. Like we have the Christmas tree with the lights, that sort of thing goes under crafts. Um, anything wood sign related, watercolors, that's all going under crafts. And then the Creatively VIP, which is everything. And I'm trying to keep this at a really low price point. So $14 for the regular per month and then $24 for the everything. Uh, I think is a pretty good deal. I just want to make sure it's affordable for everyone. And this is using your own supplies and we just give you what you need to be able to follow along with your own supplies. So that is yet another option for you. And then hopefully, <laughs> hopefully soon, we'll be able to start doing events back in our studio again. That poor studio. <laughs> so if you've been there, it's all like cutesy and creative and paintings all over and um, cute decor everywhere and a nice bar, right? Except we're now <laughs> because it's been basically a production environment for the last two and a half weeks. Uh, almost three weeks. It's a uh, kind of industrial looking in there right now. It's a totally different environment, different atmosphere than it was three weeks ago. So yeah, it's strange. It's kind of weird. Um, I, it's okay though. It's fine. I am happy as can be to be sending out art kits because you know what? There are people that can't be even open right now or that can't go to work right now. So I will take it and be thankful for it and super happy to do it. And we're doing art kits. Well, of course the art kits to go. And that's something where we can do curbside delivery. So when you order your kits, we'll call you when they're ready. And then you can just come up to, call us when you get there and we'll run it out to your car. Of course we can do the delivery. We can do home delivery where we just drop it on your step, ring the bell. So it's no contact. Um, of course it's snowing now. So I don't know how great that option is in the snow. Um, but then delivery, of course, and we can deliver anywhere. Well, should I say anywhere? Anywhere in the U.S.? I don't know. I haven't had any requests for international, so anywhere in the U.S. definitely is fine. How are your backgrounds? Are they getting dry yet? Let me know. I don't want to rush on ahead if you're still waiting for your background to dry. <laughs> I think that means dry. <laughs> if you want me to wait longer, say so. If your backgrounds are dry, let me know. Are you guys doing watch parties or painting in groups tonight? Or is it kind of uh, everybody on their own painting? I'm just curious. Like I said, it's not a studio. I don't get to walk around the room and check on everybody. Okay, well, see, I was a little bit smarter today. <laughs> see, Patsy, now that is exactly the the trick right there how to get your painting to dry you put down the brush step away from the canvas <laughs> yeah mine's getting pretty close to dry too i'll give it another minute or so at this point don't forget this is all just a background so we don't really need to get to involved. We don't really need to get too concerned. Um, the backgrounds, we're just going to 
we'll put it there and let it behave nicely and not attract too much attention. <laughs> Holly, way to go. Send everybody to another room. That's perfect. So then do you get the big room? Do you get like the big family room, living room, and then everybody else has to go find someplace else to be? Or do you have like a quiet room to yourself so that everybody can just leave you alone? I mean, either is great, right? Especially if you've been in the same house with the same people for, I don't know, three weeks now. <laughs> Two weeks, even one week. The big room, yeah. <laughs> That's okay, they can spend some time in their little rooms. <laughs> I have the big room too. So I just see what happens if you spill water. I spilled a drop of water on there like, I don't know, several minutes ago and just let it sit. But kind of, so the trick is if you do this, if you spill water on your canvas and your background paint is wet and you get water on there, it prevents the paint from sticking to your canvas. It's called acrylic underbinding if you're curious about technical terms. Um, but the way to get around that it is to do as I say, not as I do. Again, so the second time this painting, we were having the do as I say, not as I do rule. Don't do this. Don't don't try to brush that off. Don't try to brush your water drops off of your canvas. What you wanna do is just let them dry. Just let it dry completely. And it's going to take a long time and it's going to take some patience and I'm not made out of patience. And so that's a very challenging thing for me. So, uh, but what you do is you just let that dry and the paint will stick back into place again once it's completely dry. Or of course you can just let it dry and then paint over it. But depending on your background, you can get away with that sometimes, you can't other times. I'll just leave it. All right, so back to my painting. I'll look at the original again. I'm guessing your backgrounds, everybody's background sounded like it was pretty close to dry. So we're probably pretty close to being able to add our tree trunk. And this tree trunk, I'll add it way over here on the right, but this is gonna be a big wavy bendy tree trunk and so we'll switch or we'll keep using our flat brush one trick though if you're using the creative land cork paint you want to add a little bit of water to your black paint thin it out so you're just mixing a little little puddle of paint at a time so you'll have uh, about half and half water and paint maybe a little bit more water than half or sorry a little bit more paint than half um, but you're looking for thinner paint that's still pretty solid. If you try to use just paint, it's going to be too dry and it won't flow very nicely. And if it's too thin, it won't cover very well. So just a nice balance. And then you can kind of flatten your brush and pick up paint at the same time, kind of like what we were doing with making our mountains. And I'll start with my root and I'll kind of do a big wiggle all the way up to a branch. And then I'll start on another root, do a big wiggle all the way up to a branch. So let's see, flatten my brush and then I'll start way off over here, I think. And so I'm leading with the skinny edge, barely touching the canvas, light touch on the canvas. I'll do a big squiggle, wiggle. And there's my branch. Pick up a little more paint. You'll have to pick up more paint every single time. And then I have my root way off over on the right side and I'll come in to the tree and do another little squiggle wiggle. And I'll keep doing that until I have a series of roots, a series of branches and a fairly substantial trunk. So let's see, another one there and you can see that. So this is more pressure with a brush. You end up with a wider brush stroke less pressure with a brush and you have a thin brush stroke. So here's light pressure thin little tree root, more pressure. And every time I'm just branching off in another direction. 
So that's gonna keep my tree branches a little more interesting, my roots a little more interesting. And in between, I'm gonna have this big squiggly tree trunk. And I do wanna have some branches that come off over to the left. That's where my tree is going to be for the most part. So another little tree trunk and a branch that goes way over. And when we add our leaves, we can add our leaves wherever we want. The background is dark enough, the tree trunks and branches are dark enough that it doesn't matter if our leaves are on branches or not. The branches are essentially guidelines. And if we wanna follow them, we will. If we don't, we won't. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fill in, I have a couple of little gaps here. Make any extra branches you think you need to make. And most of these are going to be covered by the leaves anyway. All right, looking pretty good. And we'll just let that tree trunk be. I'll just leave my brush in the water now until I'm done, uh, done painting and then I can clean my brushes, clean your brushes then with soap and water when you're done. Uh, any kind of soap will work really, if the, you know, different kind of soaps work better than others, of course. You know, if you have an actual brush soap, that's great. Most people don't, I imagine, at home. Uh, Dawn dish soap works fantastic. Shampoo works fantastic. Um, if you have a really old ratty brush and you really don't care, eh, hand soap works great. also have let's see it's time to add our color is anybody using a color besides red or pink okay so first I think I'm going to well first I better get some red on my plate and then I'm gonna take some of that white and bring it over close to my red and if you are lucky enough to have not such a messy plate that you can put your red next to your white. You can do that. Got kind of a mess going on here. So I just want to make sure I have some white and some red. All right. Brush is going back in the water now. So the trick, and this is why I have a second plate today, the trick to these leaves. I'll just tiny little bit of water on the brush. I'm just gonna pick up a tiny little bit of red on the edges of the bristles, tiny little white on the edges of the other bristles. And I'll show you how it works over here. I'm just kind of rolling the brush now. And so these are my blowing branches. So this is definitely something that's good to practice on your plate a little bit first and something that you should do with a little more care. Um, so just slow, a little bit slower practice. Throwing in a little bit red this time. So I'm just touching barely the ends of the brush. I can... There. And if you have just pure white and then pure red, then you'll get more of a sparkly effect because that white is really going to show against your dark background. And when you make your branches go the other way, you just kind of flip your brush around and do it upside down. So you'll be getting some different looking branches, just kind of go slow. And that's a technique. So if you want to practice that a little bit first before going to your tree, go right ahead. And I'll just kind of dive right into my tree here. Oh, see? There you go, a little bit slower than that. And again, it's a tree, so <laughs> I know how easy it is to just branch these things to death. Because they're fun to paint. There, I'm just kind of 
following the direction. So everything is blowing in the wind, right? So it's all flowing toward the left. So I'm just trying to follow that flowy line toward the left. So sometimes the branches are going to go up and try to keep your branches in groups. Do little groupings. So if you have some branches going up, do a group of branches pointing up. And that is way too pink. I want red and I want white. And I've also got cat hair. <sighs> some things you just can't get away from. Pick up a little of each color, little red, little white. And my bristles are kind of sticking together, so I'll just kind of spread them out a little. So I don't re really want those solid blocks of color, I want little leaves of color. And that is what you do. You just keep right on going. There, I think that's gonna work out pretty well. Getting to be a little too pink again, so take some of the paint off that brush and I'll go back to using my just red and white fanning out the brush a little bit whenever it starts to get too globby. So I recorded a video last night of, let's see if I have it, the violet spring painting. There's the Violet Spring. That one is going to be uploaded to our Patreon, hopefully by the end of the night. It's recorded, it's edited, it's exported. <laughs> I've got some uploading. Every little thing takes time, so I'll get it done as soon as I can. And thank you to Jenny, our newest patron. Appreciate you. And if any of you stopped in the studio today to pick up supplies, <laughs> that was Drake that was there all by himself. Uh, he had the studio all to himself today because of this ice and snow that we have. I went to go to work this morning and um, there was a good thick layer of ice all over the van. And, you know, so I started it, just let it run a little while, came back out a little while later, turned on the windshield wipers and broke them. The windshield wiper on the driver's side broke into three pieces. Apparently it was still frozen when I turned it on. You know, I, like I said, I'm not made out of patience. I'm not, <laughs> not waiting for it to thaw completely. Got places to go, things to do. And uh, that didn't work out so well. So I ended up, I couldn't see to go to work. So I ended up just not going to work. Um, well, I think that my husband has now replaced the wiper. So he's got that working again. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'll go. Uh, hopefully tomorrow the roads are nice. And then, so I got, got home and I was trying to get a hold of uh, the other, the rest of the staff for the day and just let them know, hey guys, if I make it in, I'm going to be late. And just as I was about to send a message, I got a phone call <laughs> from Maddie <laughs> and she says, uh, so you're not going to believe this, but, and the exact same thing happened to her windshield wipers. So she was calling to tell me that she couldn't see to drive to work and uh, not, wasn't going to make it in today. <laughs> 
So Drake had the studio all to himself. My colors are turning out really, really pink here instead of red and white. Just fine. And you can fill this in as much as you want. Like the original here, this is pretty thoroughly filled in. That is a lot. A lot of branches on that tree. that are blowing in the wind. And just a gentle roll with a brush, with the bristles. And this is a different size, different shape canvas than the original, but it's a kind of design that can be adapted to really any shape. You can put this on a square canvas if you want. There, so just like a tree, you're going to have some thicker areas, some thinner areas. You're going to have areas where you'll, you'll have the branches That'll be a little bit thicker and some areas where you just have these leaves kind of going off by themselves. So it'll thin out. So I'm just trying to thicken up some areas in here. I think overall I'm starting to get a nice sparkly look to it. And the sparkly look is going to come from separating your reds and your whites instead of blending. So a little bit of white, a little bit of red. And that white is really going to stand out. Yep, this is one of those trees. Trees, you can branch them forever. This is one of those paintings that can go on and on. <laughs> My favorite kind. <laughs> and that's not a patience thing. It's because branches are fun. You don't have to really have that much patience for branches because you can just keep making them. Patience parts comes in where you're waiting for your canvas to dry. So when I'm recording the painting videos, I just have a hair dryer. <laughs> However many times I need to dry a painting, I just do. I'm not gonna wait around. Just about got my paint used up here. How are you guys doing? I can't wait to see what you guys paint. seen a few people say that they're going to do the same painting more than once just to try it a little bit differently next time. Has Have any of you guys done that yet? If you have, I'm curious to see.
That's something I'll do often if I'm trying to learn a new technique or try something different. I'll just, instead of changing the subject, because that takes a lot of energy too, uh, just change the painting. Or paint the same thing over, over and over again, just with a little bit different technique each time. And that can help you focus more on the technique and not have to worry about what you're painting. You already know what you're painting because you've painted it seven times, right? So then you just focus on the technique. It's very helpful, actually. And something I, one of my goals this year is, because I've been doing a lot of watercolor lately, uh, and one of my goals this year is to enter a piece in the National Watercolor Exhibition next year. And I want to do something with water and with skies. So that's my goal this year is to get better at waters and skies. And so my plan is to do 100 skies and 200 waters. 200 paintings of water in watercolor. So I haven't had time yet now since we're <laughs> trying to get the Creative Wing Cork Library online. That's been my huge focus lately. But I've got a year, right? The deadline will be probably March 2021, so. Adding a few highlights back in here. I wanna break up the tree a little bit and just add a few highlights. I don't wanna get it too dense. Just wanna add a few like sparkles. Kinda of looking like a feather boa here. <laughs> that is one heck of a blowing in the wind tree. I'm gonna call this one. So I think mine is going to be done. And thank you, Holly. Um, and if you guys wanna keep right on painting yours, you are more than welcome to. But I think this is probably a good stopping point. And like I've said before, and I'll say it again, if ever you ask the question, should I stop? The answer is always yes. So I've reached my stopping point now. <laughs> I've got a nice big pink fluffy tree and this video will be saved in our Facebook group for a while. So if you ever want to come back to it, if you ever want to um, add something new, or if you ever want to review it again, maybe you want to have a watch party with your friends, this video will be here for a while. I'm, I'm not sure how long, I won't swear by anything, but it's definitely going to be here in the group for a while. And this tree or this painting is now available in our Art Kits to Go. So you can find that there or tell your friends to find that there. And Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you join us again next time. And this, I'm Shanna Kramer, over and out.